All right, guys, in this video, we will go through the section in the component test scenarios in Angular unit testing guide uh, for testing components that have dependencies. Now, we, before we go through it, actually, let's simulate a scenario in our code base that this section is about. So for that, I will go to my existing component one. And then what I need to do here to simulate a scenario where my component depends on a service, I need to inject uh, some service and come up with a way to use it in my component so that I can demonstrate how you can test that properly uh, as the way they're talking about um, they're talking about in this guide. All right, so let's first inject a service in this component. I think I already have generated the service in the app. Yep, actually two services. There's one called service one. Let's see what it does. It has a method that's called foo. Let's let's add another method. Let's say foo two. Or actually, let's use some meaningful names. Let's say this service uh, all it does is provides a method for us that will say get text. All right. And then it will return text that will say service or I don't know, something. Let's come up with something. Uh, whatever. Let's say my service one text. That should do it. Okay, so what we want to do is inject the service in our component right here and use it in some way. So let's inject it first. Let's say here it will be private property. We'll call it service just like this. And then we'll call it service one. Service, that's the name of our class. It's a little bit of funky naming convention, but that's how they are called. And that's how you inject a service into your component. Now let's demonstrate the use of it. Let's go into the template of our component. And let's say that what we're doing in this component, forget about this input field, I'm going to remove it. This annoying warning. Hopefully it doesn't show up anymore. I don't know why it's doing that, but let's see what we're doing in this component is let's say we will call a method that will say get my string just like this. And this doesn't exist. That's why it's highlighted. Now let's add it in our component and I'll just replace this method. I'll rename that to get my string just like this. And what it's going to do, it's going to use our injected service in the way, let's see this service, get text, it returns whatever that text is implemented in service. Remember, this says my service one text, right? And what this method does, in this component, it not just it doesn't just return the text from the service, but it adds a little bit of something. Uh, let's say it concatenates another bit of string that will say, uh, let's add a space and then it'll say my component string. All right, so if I properly output the return of this method in the template like this, then what I should see in the UI when I load the app, uh, it should say the concatenation of my service one text and then my component string. Actually, let's rename this to text for more, for better consistency. Okay, and now let's, let's go what it looks like in the UI. If I open my app, that's running on localhost port 42. And that's not showing anything. Let's see any errors in the console. 
Yep, it's a service get get text is not a function. That refers to this. That means I didn't import it properly. Inject it. I think I did. But it says this is not a function. That means it doesn't recognize service. Why would that do that is a little bit of a mystery for me right now. But let's let's just output this in the console. Let's output what we are getting in this string during when component runs. So that'll be a little bit of extra debugging information. Look at this. Looks like a legit service instance to me. It says service two though. Why is it service two? I don't think that's that's what it's supposed to be. So here it says service one, and here it says service one. And then I go get text on that. Oh, look at this. Uh, here I am also injecting the service two. So let me let me remove that stuff. I think it's messing things up. So I just remove the dependency of service one on service two, which was the point of another video demonstrating service dependencies. All right, now I remove that dependency and here we go. Now we see the concatenation result of the string that comes from the service and then the string that's being appended in the components. So now we demonstrated uh, the scenario where our component is this our component? Nope. This is our component. All right, let me delete these guys for now. We demonstrated the scenario where our component in this method specifically relies on the service being injected. Okay, so that's cool. Now let's go back to the guide. Let's see what they say about the first thing. Component with a dependency. All right, so for their dependency, they use user service and they use a method or a property on the user service to determine what string to display, whether this, uh, which is a concatenation of welcome and plus username, or just this one. So uh, something similar to what we are doing. And now the first point there demonstrating here is that when you are testing uh, this kind of thing, you should uh, make sure that when you're injecting that dependent service during the test run, uh, you are injecting a test, uh, a test double, not the actual service. And to demonstrate that point, let's write a little test that will assert against uh, what we are getting this, um, what we're getting in this div. So go back to the test and let me exclude this test. That, that was the old test. So we'll actually to make sure it doesn't really confuse anybody. Let me just comment out the whole thing and then add a new one on top, remove the exclusion designation here. I'll say should, um, I don't know. I don't. I don't want to spend time coming up with this name. So let's just get to the point here. So what we are going to do is uh, obviously we need to run the tech changes, and then we are going to assert against. Let me delete a bunch of stuff here. Okay, we'll use that. Let me comment out that. Actually, let me describe what we're doing here. So I'll comment out this then. And what we're going to do is assert that the component or assert that the div shows the con conca the nation, I don't know if that spelled it right, but that's what you got the concatenation of strings. And I think that's that's all really to it. So the first thing what you need to do is to you, you need to run the tech changes. Okay, let's put it above. And then 
to assert against what's inside of the div, we'll use fixture, uh, we'll, we'll query against the div, and then we'll refer to the text content property of that because that's what that's how you assert what's inside of it. And then let's take care of the actual assertion where we expect this value to be equal whatever our application returns for that. So it's, it will be this string really. So let's run that test and see if it's passing. And we're doing that to demonstrate the point that you shouldn't actually do that. Now let's look at the test. It's failing here. I don't think it should be failing. Um, and that actually shows that it's failing test for services. So let me go into those services and disable those tests because this is not relevant right now. So I'll disable this test and then about service two test, I'll disable that as well. We run the test and if we see green, that means uh, our test that we just wrote is passing. Now let me get rid of this error here too. So it's in the service. In service one, it complains about the fact that we're referring to this unexisting method now. So let me, let me kill that too. And we have just our green test. All right, now, where were we? We were asserting that our div in the template shows the concatenation of two strings. One is coming from the service and the, uh, the other one is added in the component. Let me delete this and remove this comment too. All right, that, that's our entire test. And if we visit the guide right now and, and read this portion here, the conclusion would be is that we shouldn't test things like we did because what we let that happen, what we just let happen is that during our tests, the, the test was ex executing our component, right? And if we look into our component, or let's, let's check the template. So this template was being parsed and test runner uh, or angular core at this point, it looked at, okay, so there's a method for getting my string. Let me execute it. And then before it tried to execute it, the service was injected. Uh, and then it executed this method. And from the service, it executed the real instance of this service and its method to get that string and it can catenate it. So everything happened the same as it happens when you run that thing in the browser. And now the test guide says you shouldn't do that because you should use, you should mock this service. And uh, during the test run, you should let it run uh, a mocked or as they say, it's stubbed instance of this service instead of letting uh, it to inject the real thing. And the reason for that is because services are rarely as simple as we have this one here that doesn't have any dependencies. And if you let your tests uh, load or inject the real thing and try to figure out all the other things that this thing requires to be real, uh, it'll become pretty much a nightmare to try to make it work because it will fail. It will fail for one reason and then you solve that reason and it will fail for another reason and you just go into the really deep rabbit hole. So the solution for that is, let's look at what they uh, suggest here and they say that to create a test double for the service that is a dependency in your component, you should uh, specify this provider property and then provide that service using the injection token right here. You should provide some class that you just made up that looks like the service that you're using in there. All right, so let's copy this provider's statement and find our own our own implementation on, of configure testing module. Go in our test and then let's see, here's the configure test module. It doesn't have the provider's property yet. So let's add that. And then here let's use well, here we need to mock 
or stub the service that we're using and remember that service that's called service one service just like this and then remember this is the injection token it's just a way for us to tell hey when when the angular core or angular injector encounters this um, injection token here which is kind of an instruction for the injector to tell okay for for this variable let's inject uh, this instance and you need to make up that instance you need to instantiate it when the injector encounters that what we're telling it through the tests here is that instead of creating a real instance of that just use whatever the thing we make up here and to make up that thing let's rename it let's say actually look at this i think i made a typo it should be service one not two so that was an incorrect injection token almost introduced a bug so let me re-import the correct thing and remove the wrong thing which was service two and then for value let's say it will be something like actually let me copy the implementation of their stub and it is super simple object javascript object here it's not even a class or anything it's just an object which is kind of the same as a class but let's not get into these weeds yet so here we'll declare i'll i'll call it service one stub just like this okay and um shouldn't be okay you need to declare this variable first so it'll be let's or I, I don't think i don't think i need to be creating that uh variable i'll just say like this i just declare this variable right here and then then i paste it here all right so now when injector tries to inject this thing the service one using this injection token it will actually inject that stub and these methods don't match of what the interface of the service one remember the service one what it does is it has only one method get text and it returns a string so here i'll say get text and I'll have it. So it's a function, remember? And I'll I'll say that it's a function that uh, returns a simple string that'll say stubbed string. And that simulates um, the service one method. Okay, here we got that and let's try to execute the test and see if our test or actually uh you know what we made this mocking stuff here right we mocked up our our service one and now what we should assume is that the text generated by the component based on the mock will be something more like this where the first part is being taken from the mock string and then we append the custom thing. So let's see what happens in the test. Look at that, it passed with this updated assertion. That means our mocking worked properly. So during our test run, what we get in here is stub string, my component text, but during real browser uh, load, we get whatever the real thing is happening in the service. Okay, I hope that uh, sort of clarifies this point and then further in the further videos we go what else you can do uh, with these stubs to do some some more advanced mocking or whatever this guide is talking about all right see you guys later